It started at a state penitentiary in the eastern part of the country a little over a year ago when a man named Ben Adams was waiting for his younger brother to be released from prison. You look great. Just great. Yeah? That's pale, though, I bet. Oh, forget it, Harry. Get it out of your mind. It'll fade. You watch and see. We'll make it fade. Yeah. It's a good trick if you can do it. It's over, kid. The whole four years. Now, this is what you got to keep remembering. You did your time, and you got a right to start as clean as anybody else. Warden was telling me that just 20 minutes ago. Sounds good anyway. Don't look back, kid. You got too much ahead of you. Come out of a place like this, you got a mark on you, don't rub off. Quit it, will you? You sound like this was the end of the world instead of just the beginning. Oh, well, it's the difference. Although a good many people may not realize it, the National and Federal Firearms Acts are enforced by the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Division of the Internal Revenue Service. And when firearms are stolen, altered, or illegally transported across state lines, it becomes this department's obligation to apprehend those who are involved in violations of these statutes and to gather evidence for their punishment. And now, in my role as Chief Enforcement Officer of the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Division, Internal Revenue Service, I'm going to tell you about a case in which the Firearms Acts were violated and a man who thought he could get away with it. This is Treasury File 1139, Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Division. The case of the ready guns. What do you think of my kid brother, huh, Julie? Nice looking baby of the family, eh? Ben, you're embarrassing him. Don't worry yourself, I don't embarrass easy. Well, you have every reason to. The last time you saw Ben, he was single, and now you come home to find he has a wife on his hands. I think it was mean, Ben, letting Harry walk in the door without even telling him. What'd you want me to do, spoil the whole surprise? Yeah, ben likes to surprise me, didn't you know that, Julie? It's part of being a big brother. Well, he's had a lot of practice. All his life, you might say. Some more pie, Harry? Oh, thanks. Well, uh, what do you think of my Julie, huh, Harry? A girl that cooks like that and looks like that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, sure, you pick them fine. Look, let's get off on the right foot, shall we? What kind of phony stories has this guy been telling you about me? And I come from out west. I've been out of the country somewhere. I travel a lot. What's he been telling you? He told me one thing, Harry. The truth. That you just finished a four-year jail sentence. Is that what you wanted to hear me say? It's a nice gift for the new bride, isn't it? Having a jailbird around the house. Doesn't that sort of scare you, Julie? All right, Harry, that's enough of that. You're punishing yourself for nothing, Harry. Nobody's asking any questions. You're Ben's brother and Ben's my husband. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. Uh, look, now that we're squared away on that, come on, kid, I got another surprise for you. Get your coat, we're going downtown. Well, now that we've had the 25 cent tour, what do you think of the place, Harry? You're not disappointed, are you? No, it's fine, Vance. It's fine. Uh, I, I know I make too much of it. It's just a metal shop, that's all it is, and we're going to have to work our brains out to make a buck out of it, but, but it's ours, Harry, and I'm proud of it. You knock it off, Ben. I got the point. What? I can smell a lecture coming a mile off, that honesty routine. Well, I don't need it from you or a warden. Harry, I wasn't going to lecture you. I just wanted to make sure you had a different slant on things, that's all. You sweat out four years in an eight-by-eight eight hole, you'd have a different slant on things, too. Believe me, Buster. That's what I'm worried about, Harry. It's that attitude. What's the matter with my attitude? Doesn't satisfy you? Oh, come on, kid. You know what I'm talking about. It's that world owes me a living thing you've had all your life. What's it ever done for you except get you in a lot of trouble? Look, you're a big boy now, Harry. You can't afford to hold on to those kid ideas anymore. 
I just want you to stop snarling at the world, that's all. Oh, yeah, I should smile at it for what it's done for me. I should jump for joy because the minute I get out of jail, my big brother comes through for me. What do you want me to do? Get down on my knees and thank you for a lousy job? Is that part of your reform technique? Come on, Harry, you're twisting my words. You know I don't want nothing like that. And just get off my back, will you? Let me work things out my own way. Don't tell me how to act. Sure, sure. I, I guess I've been talking too much. I, I'm so glad you're back, Harry. I've been saying all the wrong things. Let's forget it, huh? Sure. Come on, we got a lot of work to be done. Let's get with it, huh? On the day that Harry Adams was released from prison, investigator Hamilton brought a report to my desk from a regional office of the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Division. Two nights before, a small warehouse in New England had been robbed, and five cases of foreign-made semi-automatic pistols had been stolen. And the local police reported that the night watchman had been knocked unconscious while he was making his rounds. By the time he'd recovered, his assailant had disappeared, and five cases of guns were taken from the storeroom. You have the description of these guns and the serial numbers? Yes, sir. They're all in the report. I plan to put out a bulletin on the name, make, and description as soon as I leave here, but uh, I doubt that I'll produce any results for a while yet. Probably not. It's unlikely that these guns were stolen for sale to the general public, and if they weren't, it may be a long time before any of them start showing up. You know what a job it is to track weapons like these once the underworld gets hold of them. Well, chances are that's why they were stolen. Either by some underworld gang or uh, somebody who's in the business of supplying them with guns. Have any idea who that somebody might be? Not yet, Chief. I've been going through the files trying to get a line on the method of operation, but uh, so far I haven't run into anything conclusive. As of right now, I have only one very slight lead on the man who committed the robbery. And what's that? His description. According to the night watchman, the man who assaulted him was uh, slightly over medium height, slender, wore a black mustache. But his most distinctive feature is a large mole, right here. Keep squinting like that, you're gonna need glasses. <laughs> I think you need them now, I hey, Harry. Yeah, if it ain't old poison himself. Poison? Well, that's a nice opener. Here I am, your pal and stuff, for almost three years. Now you call me poison. What's the matter, you going hi-hat or something? Me? Uh, we all used to call you poison, don't you remember? What are you doing here? Don't you live in Boston? No, not always. I've been moving around a lot in the last year. Just having a light on this place. So what about you? A couple of boys tell me you got a regular job with your brother here. What's the story? You going straight now? Yeah. Something like that. How straight? What you got in mind? Not here. Come up to my place tonight. Any time after 8 o'clock. Here's the address. I'll tell you all about it then. About what? What you got up your sleeve? Pretty good deal the way I figure it. If it works out all right, I can cut you in for about... five times what you make in this hen house. Well, we gotta go right to work. Doing what? Kind of particular these days, you know. I don't even know if I want to get mixed up in anything at all. What's the matter? Your big brother watching over you now? Aren't you old enough to walk by yourself? You being funny? I'll see you tonight, kid. Who says I'll be there? Who says you won't? want it that bad. Why didn't you ask for it, Harry? Now, wait a minute. Why? Just tell me why. What has Ben ever done to deserve this? What are you trying to do? Kill him? Tear his heart out by inches? All his life picking up after you, making excuses for you, trying to keep you out of trouble. And this is his thanks. Why don't you take a gun and shoot him, Harry? It would be kinder. How can you do this to him? Did you find that money yet, Harry? Look under the shirts like I told you. Hey, are we going bowling or not, Slowpoke? You know they ain't gonna hold an alley for us all night. Well, come on, you got the money, let's go. Hey, what's the matter with you two? Harry, I'm sorry. Hey, what is all this? Nothing. 
It's the tip off where I really stand, that's all. So it's pretty stupid to think it could be any different. What? I told you that don't wear off, Ben. That mark that you get in prison. Forget the bowling. Wait a minute, where are you going? Just gotta look up a guy. Well, this guy, at least I'm sure where I stand. Well, what do you think? I think you're nuts. Just get out of stir and you knock over a warehouse and steal a gun, is he crazy? Mm -hmm. I got fox. What do you think I could peddle this for right now? Mm, I don't know. 60, 70 bucks. Yeah, about that. But it'll be worth three times that amount after you get through working on it. Working on it? What you talking about? The gun. Fixing it up so it'll go fully automatic. Like a machine gun. You don't have to keep pulling the trigger each time. The rods like that I can sell to any mob in the country. Uh, it's a lot of work, Eddie. You gotta file on that sear pin till it's just a Yeah, right sure, minute. sure, I know it's a lot of work. That's why I came to see you. You're just the guy that can do it. And you've got the setup. The perfect setup. That metal shop. All the tools, all the time, the work, and the perfect cover. Yeah, I don't know if my brother ever found out about it. Oh, can he? You do this at night when he ain't even around. That shop, you know, he, he made it half mine. He really went out of his way to give me a job there. Oh, what job? What kind of a job? You could have stayed in prison and run a machine. You're going to work in a metal shop. Let's get some real dough out of it. Oh, come on, Harry. There's a fortune in this. Twenty bucks for every gun you fix. Twenty bucks. I got sixty of them. You know how much that is? I got 25 minutes of deal. You just went into business. The job of altering the stolen guns to enhance their sale price to members of the underworld began the next night when Harry Adams arranged to be alone in the metal shop. And for the next three weeks, Harry kept working and delivering the guns to Eddie Sykes, who gladly paid him in cash for his labors, and in turn, sold them to thugs and hoodlums who paid him the price he asked. Hey, I, sweetheart. There's another $25. There's still more where that came from. <laughs> well, I tell you, I tell you, if you stuck with me, you'd do all right. Have a drink on it. Uh, never mind about that. I just want to finish up and get out of here. What are you so nervous about? I'm always nervous when I'm doing this. If my brother ever found oh, out... Oh, you forget that honest John brother of yours. He don't mean nothing. You and me are going places, kid. Look at the dough I made for you. Now, who's your real friend? Him or me? Come on. Let's get out of here. Yeah, sure. For a period of several weeks, there were no new developments on the gun robbery. And then, suddenly... A daring daylight bank robbery was attempted on the east side of town. One of the holdup men was shot, and the gun he carried recovered. A gun which had obviously been altered, but which fit the description and caliber of the guns which had recently been stolen from the warehouse. Yes, sir, this is one of the stolen guns we've been looking for, all right. The serial numbers had been filed out, but the lab brought them back with acid. I see. Do you have any lead where the gun came from? Were you able to question the man who used it? <laughs> no. He was in no condition to talk, Chief. He had to go right to the hospital. But I, uh, I think the gun itself might give us a pretty good lead. How so? Well, I spent almost the entire afternoon at the lab looking over the alterations that had been made. And they came up with a lead on this grip that's been added to the barrel. The lab seems to think they can track down the name of the manufacturer. Apparently, this grip is a standard item. Uh-huh. And if it is... And you're able to locate the manufacturer, you may be able to locate the man who made the purchase. Exactly. All right, Hamilton, do what you can. And if you need anything, let me know. What are you doing in here, Harry? Is that what four years in jail taught you? Uh, look, it's not what you think. Ben, uh, I'm just fixing this. See, I'm just preparing it for a friend. In the middle of the night? Uh, well, look, look, I man. want to know what you've been mixed up with in the last couple of weeks, Harry. I told you, I'm just fixing these. I'm just trying to pick up a little extra dough, that's all. Is that why you're filing them down? Taking the serial numbers off and changing the safety catches? You're mixed up in something, Harry, and I got a right to know what it is. Now, what is it? 
right, all right. It's a job. I got something I can do. I get paid for. That's all. I get paid plenty. You've got a job. Yeah, because I'm your brother. You think anybody else is going to give me a job? Well, this guy is, see? He doesn't care what I've done. He just pays me, that's all. He doesn't care how long I served. He, he just thinks of me as a guy. I, I do the work for him. He pays me. That's all there is to it. Work? You call this work, fixing up guns for a racketeer of some kind? Harry, where are your eyes? Can't you see where you're going? You're going right back to prison again, only this time it ain't gonna be just four years. And look, you look! You say there's a mark on you, and it's eating away at you inside, making you do the things you do. Harry, lie to me if you want to, but don't lie to yourself. The only mark on you is the one that you're putting there yourself, can't you see that? And going back to what you were is only making a bigger mark. Oh, ben. Harry, open up your eyes. Take a good look at the sign on the door. How else can I show you where you stand? Harry, look, now, while there's still time, get out of it, quit this racket. Now, promise me. I, look, just tell me you will and we'll forget all about it. We'll never talk about it again. It, it, it never happened. Now, promise me. All right, all right. I promise, Ben. You promised? Are you off your rocker? I'll make a big deal out of it, Eddie. I told you I promised. Just like that. A sweet deal like this goes up in smoke just because of your brother. Great. Oh, it's just great. I can't help it. He was nice to me. He knew all about what I was doing. He was still nice to me. So what? So he was nice. Big deal. Does that mean you gotta go to pieces? You wouldn't understand. Look, Harry, business is business. It ain't easy to come up with a good racket, you know that. We're doing great with this one. You want to knock it off for a while, fine. But that ain't no reason to go throwing the whole thing up. Nah. Look, we only got a few more guns to go. Another dozen jobs to do. Give us another week, we finish it off. What's the point of throwing out that kind of dough? It's 300 bucks for you. Uh, I can't help it, but I promise. You've got so much dough, you can afford to pass that up? Besides, you owe it to me, Harry, after all I've done for you. You want to be a jerk and pass up a sweet deal like this? That's your worry. But you owe it to me to finish off what we got. All right. All right, Eddie, I'll finish what we got, but after that, it's all over. Okay. Okay, just finish off the rest and we call it a day. Oh, Mr. Adams? Yes, sir? Hamilton, Internal Revenue Service. Well, uh... Sit down, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you. I have some questions I'd like to ask you. Sure, go right ahead. You do any business with a company known as Lunar Manufacturing? Uh, no, sir, I don't believe so. Uh, what do they manufacture? Gun parts, Mr. Adams, and accessories. That name more familiar to you now? Why, uh, no, I don't, I don't believe I've ever heard of that company. You've uh, never ordered any hand grips from them for automatic weapons? No, sir, I haven't. Strange. I mean, according to their records, two orders for hand grips were shipped to this address within the past month. Well, there must be some mistake. I, I never made any order like that, and I know I didn't receive any. And you're quite sure? Yes, sir, I'm positive. Uh, perhaps your brother, I noticed that they're partners. Uh, maybe he ordered the grips. No, he uh, he's out of town. Oh, where, Mr. Adams? Well, he uh, uh, he's on a motor trip. I, I don't know exactly. You know, he stops at different places. Mr. Adams, this is very serious. I'm sure you realize that you may be called upon to back up these statements at another time. Look, look, Mr. Hamilton, what's wrong? I, I haven't been feeling so good lately, and if there's anything else I can do for you, why, well, fine, but if not, why, well, I'd appreciate it if you'll let me get back to my work, because I'd like to go home and get some rest. All right, Mr. Adams, I won't keep you anymore right now, but uh, when your brother gets back from his trip, I'd like to see him. Yes, sir. Bye, Mr. Adams. Hello. Oh, hello, Hamilton. What's new? I see. And the Luna Manufacturing Company claims that the order was sent to the Adams Brothers and they have a signed receipt. Yes, sir. But those grips were received all right. I think this man Adams I've been talking to is simply trying to cover up. Well, either for himself or his brother. Yes, I just learned that his brother was only recently released from a state penitentiary. All right, Hamilton. See if you can't locate this brother. And in the meantime, keep both the metal shop and the Adams home under surveillance. Well, 
what is it, Ben? What's the matter? It's nothing. I, I got a slight headache, that's all. Oh, it's more than that. I could tell it the minute you walked in the door tonight. It's Harry, isn't it? Harry's done something. For what, Ben? What did he do? He's mixed up in something. About guns. Oh, no. Didn't realize, Julie's just a kid. Oh, there are lots of kids, Ben, but most of them manage to stay out of trouble. Oh, I know how you feel about Harry, but you can't blame yourself. You spent your whole life picking up after him, and it still wasn't enough to keep him straight. There's nothing more you can do. There is, Julie. One thing more. They mustn't get Harry for this. They'd throw the book at him. You can't help that, Ben. It's out of your hands now. Julie, listen to me. I know Harry knows better now. I, I'm sure he does. He, he promised me. If they send him to jail again, it'll break him for good. He'll, he'll never straighten himself out after this one. I can't let that happen. But then what can you do? Julie, I, I gotta make him think I did it, not Harry. Ben, you can't. Don't you see, honey? I've gotta do it. I've gotta give him this chance. Ben, listen to me. This is your life you're talking about. Prison. A man like you in prison for something you didn't even do. Honey, maybe I wouldn't have to go. Maybe they'd be easy with me. I, I got no record. I, I've never even had a parking ticket. Oh, honey, please. I know how you feel about him, but this isn't right. He's your brother and you love him and you should, but you can't pay for his mistakes. Where are you going? I'm going down to shop. I gotta make it look like I was the one. No, Ben. Honey, he's my brother. I gotta give him this chance. Oh, will you go find something else to do? You drive me nuts staring over my shoulder like that. Look, the sooner you get this done, the sooner you get your done, we'll finish this off. I know, I know, but let me alone, will you? Look, Ben, I want to explain. Explain what, Harry? That all my life I've been the only one that's been wrong about you? That everybody else has been right? That your promise isn't worth a nickel? Ben? That you're a bum and you'll never be anything else but? Is that what you want to explain, Harry? Well, you don't have to because I know it now. Ben, this was... This was the last that was going to finish this. It was going to be the last. Honest! Sure, sure. Let me make you feel good, Harry. You know why I came down here tonight? To take the blame for you. To take the blame for you so you wouldn't have to go back to jail. What jail? What are you talking about? The Treasury Department. They know about these guns. And I gotta tell them who's been fixing them. You ain't gonna tell anybody anything. Of course, you're gonna be dead. Are you crazy? Put that gun away. Yeah, sure. After I get rid of this big mouth brother of yours, he ain't gonna send me back to jail. I'm doing you a favor, kid. He'd send you up, too. He just said so. Put that gun away. He's my brother. You won't have to worry about that after this. Harry, let me get something out of here. No, wait. Look, let me talk. I know I gotta go back to jail, Ben. Whatever they give me this time, I can't kick because I know the reason. But, look, when I get out, it's gonna be different. I, I know it will. I'll be here, Harry. Harry Adams and Edward Sykes stood trial later that same year. Sykes, charged with robbery and assault with a deadly weapon, was convicted and sentenced to a state penitentiary where he is now awaiting prosecution on federal charges of violations of the National and Federal Firearms Acts. In an effort to gain clemency, he named every hoodlum to whom he had sold one of the altered weapons and many of these men have already been apprehended. Harry Adams was tried and convicted in a federal court and is now serving out the remainder of his sentence.